in the feed there if you're on facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash wirecast pros and p-r-o-s not p-r-o-s-e because that's pros not pros anyway let's talk about this the wise cams awesome stuff these things are the the main ones under 20 bucks 20 20 25 bucks or something like that this one uh was f about 40 dollars and you got to put in your own sd card and it does sd card recording and it does live streaming but it has one other functionality and that's called rtsp the ability to stream it and the idea is to stream it to a box which is your security box your computer that runs and basically just collects all the video data so you have one unit to research from rather than all your units to uh, you know going into the app and going okay what does, what does this camera do what does this camera do and i've been uh using this for uh, you know going through different uh, security cameras because of course geekazine does do review security cameras and the wise uh I'm, I'm actually ditching one of my older security cameras because they keep disconnecting and it's it's really sad and i've talked to them about it and they say oh there's nothing you can do and of course you know technology gets old you got to replace it and you know replacing with one of these systems if they're under a hundred dollars a camera that's pretty cool and bringing it into a security box which they can record it and, or you can look at it on the app, one of the two, one of two ways. But once again, you can set up a router for all your security cameras going straight to the box. So that is, has the least amount of a resistance. And then you have everything recorded in one area. Uh, so, and I had, like I said, I have different brands of security cameras around here. Like Homemate is right over here. I've got the Easy Viz over there. I got the Arlo's up there. I've got, <laughs> I got like three other brands of cameras. I can't think of them offhand. But anyway, the idea is that, you know, having them to go to one area to record out so you can go, it's, it's just perfect. So anyway, that's, that's what this camera is. And the cool thing about this is I can sit here and uh, now I, I can use the PTZ options, maybe. Where's it going? Oh, there we go. And bring this camera to me, so I can I can see what's going on around the area. Uh, the Homemate actually has a PTZ option as well, which is really cool. And I have it pointed outside, so it can see what's going on outside. But that this is the camera itself. Pretty easy for, uh, and of course we got the little app right here that allows me to control it but it has another functionality and that's the rtsp the ability to hook it up into wirecast and i'm going to show you how to do that here in a second here and in fact let's uh let's switch over to this one there we go and i've got wirecast set up on this this machine right here of course and i've got all my rtsp cameras like for instance this is the web stream right here the one i just showed you this is my PTZ Optics, which is the uh, PTZ camera, which I normally use NDI for. And then, of course, I got a shot of my outside, the, another Wise Cam, showing you the, the front door. So as you can see, uh, you can do a lot of different things with that. Uh, and, and as you can see, it's also not perfect because of connections. Now, the, in all fairness, right now I have this camera that it, this machine's pulling it. My main machine's pulling it, and the uh, and the phone is pulling the video feed right now. So it's gonna probably not be perfect. In fact, if I go like this, look at that. It'll have a little bit of delay. It's running 15 frames a second. So the the best solution for these cameras is let's say you're at a live conference and you just want a simple overall shot, an overall shot of the crowd, maybe. Maybe you're going on break or something like that, and you have this camera sitting in the corner there uh, with a good line of sight between your router and and that uh, and that device, and you just want to capture people walking around. It doesn't have to be 30 frames a second. It can it can be 15. It can and if it hiccups, it hiccups. It's not a big deal, and you can set up one over there and one over there. So if this is hiccuping, you can go over here, and that's not hiccuping as much. 
Uh, but you get the idea. And then you don't have to wire it here. And I can use this uh, on stage, a backstage camera, or, or you, know, you get the idea. There's many different uses for this one little camera right here. So how do we do it? It's actually very, very straightforward. It doesn't come natively on the Wise camera. What you have to do is you have to go to your, their website here, and let's, let's show you the website. It's, uh, and, and just type in Wise, W-Y-Z-E space R-T-S-P. And that will allow you to uh, come to this page. Uh, they say that it's in beta, although I've read some things that it's not in beta, but I'm not 100% sure. It's not fully supported. So if you have problems, they might tell you, reset your WISE camera and, and, and start from scratch over here. So uh, they have two different types of firmware. One is for the uh, static cameras, and then the one's for the uh, PTZ camera here the wise cam pan is what they call it uh you basically put it onto your sd card and then you insert the sd card into the camera like they're showing you here you hold down the setup button while you turn the camera on which basically plug it in and then wait about four minutes it installs the additional firmware and then you're good you're good to go uh you come back you go to the app and we'll go here. So we go to the app and then you'll go into your settings and you'll go to your advanced settings and down on the bottom, you'll see, and it won't be here if you're, uh, if you don't have a setup, but it, once you have it set up, you'll see RTSP. So you set it up and so you basically give it a username and password. The only, only problem I have with this, you can't use special characters. So capitals, lowercase and numbers. It's okay. But when you're talking a security camera and you're enabling RTSP, you want to have a secure password. 12 characters, uppercase, lowercase, and symbols makes it harder for people to get in here. So that's the only, the only issue I have with this thing is it will not accept special characters. And that is not cool. But anyway, once it does that, you, you get the IP address and it creates the RTSP file. And then you go in and we'll go back over to here. There we are. So we hit the plus button. We say network. We want new web stream. And we'll say add. And I can put the RTSP here, username, password. Um, and in this case, it gives me a whole the whole line. Uh, RTSP colon slash slash usernames uh, dot password at IP address forward slash live. But you can put in RTSP IP address forward slash live right here in where it says URI. Username is the username and the password is the password. We got a buffer here. And of course we can use the video delay and audio delay. Now keep in mind that the, depending on what camera you use, there's gonna be a delay on this. And sometimes uh, the first time I hooked up this camera, it was, or the other camera actually, it was about a six second delay. And then I brought it closer and it became a two second delay. You'll see, you see, you, you get the difference. You get the idea. So it's not going to be perfect. That's why I say that this, this is perfect for doing an overall shot. If you don't need, you, you just want something to fill the screen and show movement, show that you're there. Then this is, this is a perfect, but there's other cameras out there that also do RTSP. And uh, of course their protocol is tweaked a little bit different that they're going to make updates to this as they go, which might even improve the RTSP here. And if it can do RTSP, can it also do NDI? Let's think about that. A lot of your cameras, any camera that has some sort of wireless to it might be able to also do other protocols like the web was a web web RC and, uh, and uh, RTSP and NDI and whatever new protocol comes out in the years to come. It's very possible that with a firmware update that could change that whole thing for a lot of different cameras. So uh, it's, it's awesome. And, and like I said, the best part about this is I can put this in a place. I could put this on the ceiling. It's so lightweight. I could put this on the ceiling and then have product views coming from overhead. And if I don't need if I don't, if, if, if it skips out or anything like that, I, it's fine. But 
I don't know. It, it's it's a you know, I think it's a great camera to have, and especially if you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and it's all of a sudden it's like, hey, can you do this type of camera? It's like, I think I can, and you can pull these out of your bag, and uh, and go from there.